How's it going everyone? Dr. Ben here, your internet doctor dad that cares about you and today we're going to be talking about vaginal anatomy and physiology changes once someone starts testosterone. I know, I know, very spicy topic but I feel like it's really, really important to talk about uh, changes that happen down there because as people, human beings, <laughs> <laughs> who uh, decide to make the choice to medically transition, not only are we going to be seeing changes in our bodies that the outside world can see, but changes that only we and our uh, intimate partners see and experience when we are going through medical transition. And sexual health is a huge part of someone's health. So uh, let's get down and dirty about, <laughs> no pun intended, about, you know, some of the changes that one can expect when they start hormone replacement therapy with testosterone and they have vaginal anatomy. So the first thing I want to talk about is the impact of estrogen on vaginal lubrication and how it protects us from uh, STIs and certain diseases. Uh, down there. First of all, uh, the secretion of estrogen uh, allows for the secretion of um, this mucousy like material, which is very similar to the snot that we make, but it allows our, um, it allows one's vagina to secrete this uh, muc mucousy material to uh, further lubricate it. Two, estrogen promotes pH balance of um, these secretions, which uh, a lot of people don't know, but the lower pH that's secreted with this, with these mucus-like secretions actually protects you from certain STIs. It also protects you from things like yeast infections, also known as bacterial vaginosis. Anatomy-wise, when someone starts testosterone, there's a blockade of estrogen secretion, which means that your the anatomy of the vagina turns into kind of what it looks like in someone who identifies as a cisgender woman and undergoes menopause, which means usually uh, the vaginal anatomy has these bumps along it, ridges, ridges along it, um, called rugae, and that tends to flatten out. And within this rugae are uh, develops collections of the lubricating material that the vagina makes, allowing it to uh, allow for more seamless uh, penetration. But unfortunately, when it flattens out, there's not a lot. The, the lubrication is less, which can lead to intercourse being pretty, pretty painful for certain individuals. I want to emphasize that not everyone is going to experience these symptoms. And two, not everybody is going to be affected by these changes because a lot of trans men and trans masculine folks on testosterone choose not to have any form of penetration when it comes to uh, sexual play. But a lot of people do. A small number of people might also experience inflammation of the vagina called vaginitis or inflammation of the cervix called cervicitis. So all of these things together, you know, I, I want to emphasize that not everybody's going to experience it, but some people might only experience it for a certain amount of time. I personally experienced pelvic pain for a while and that could have been due to vaginitis or cervicitis, but that quickly went away after being on testosterone. I'm almost on five years, but that went away after like the end of the two year mark. And it was a lot more in my first year and slowly over time got less and less. So a lot of these things, yes, they are drags, but when is living life not a drag? I mean, even if you're not on hormones, you're gonna have some health concerns, whether you like it or not. The, the emphasis that I want to make is like, how do we mitigate these symptoms if it's bothering you? So when I had pelvic pain with vaginitis and cervicitis, I uh, wanted to make sure that I was protected. I didn't have an STI. So I got routine STI screening whenever I had a new partner. And two, um, I kept up to date with my recommended you know cancer screening so if you still have your cervix if you still have certain parts that require routine cancer screening make sure you get those pap smears every three years or every five years depending on the guidelines that your doctor is following or what you should follow and two uh, make sure that if you are you know um sexually active get tested because the pelvic pain might be an sti or it could be vaginitis or cervicitis. Or let's say you are experiencing pain with intercourse and it's because of this lack of enough lubrication. Make sure that you're using lube. I mean, 
that is one simple solution and if that's not helping then a really a uh, good other uh, solution is something called topical estrogen which your doctor can prescribe and i want to emphasize this a lot of people get scared when they hear the word topical estrogen oh no it's so bad for me but that doesn't really um cause any systemic d signs so it's not going to change um, the changes that testosterone is making outside of the vaginal anatomy. Topical estrogen works at the site it's being applied to. So as long as you're applying it where it needs to go, it's not going to affect the changes for, in the rest of your body. I know that's easier said than done in a world where uh, the Western medical system tends to make m uh, seeking care incredibly, incredibly expensive. Uh, but these are the general things I want to emphasize if you have access to these resources. And if you don't have access to these resources, look into the areas where you live where you can potentially have access to these resources. If you're experiencing symptoms of pelvic pain, make sure to keep something called a pain diary. Do you have other symptoms such as bleeding, spotting? All of those things need further workup. It could be something else. Uh, that needs testing. So get plugged in with a good primary care doctor. It could even be the doctor that's prescribing you your hormones or uh, a gender affirming gynecologist because it's important if you have gynecological organs that it gets its routine screening. And even though pelvic pain is something that can be something benign and goes away on its own, it can also indicate something very, very, very serious. So I know this video is short, but I think it's very important for those who are considering starting testosterone or have been on testosterone for a while and wondering about some of these physiological and anatomical changes testosterone can uh, induce in someone or a lack of estrogen, um, a lack of enough estrogen can induce in someone. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you gained something from this information. I hope that you'll share this information with someone that may benefit from this information and I'll see y'all in the next video. Mwah. This is Dr. Ben.